Every action undertaken in combat sports can be considered either a lead or a counter. Leading and the two forms of counters, delayed counters and simultaneous counters, together make up what are known as the three initiatives. The concept of these three methods predates even the bare-knuckle pugilism of the 1700s. In 1642, the Japanese swordsman Musashi Miyamoto laid out these initiatives in his legendary manual on the martial arts, Gorin no Sho, the Book of Five Rings. And while times and techniques have changed, timing has not. Leading. The lead is the most straightforward. It is quite simply attacking first. The man who moves first, just as in a dance, is leading the action. The aim can be to land cleanly, to set up more significant strikes, or to draw a response. Leading is generally considered more hazardous because a fighter is showing his hand. Consequently, most leads are long, conservative strikes, which do not open a fighter up to a return as much as stepping in with power punches would. The most important lead in boxing is the jab. By throwing this almost side on, a boxer can hide behind his lead shoulder and effectively deny his opponent clean targets. Ready to duck a returning punch. In Muay Thai, the lead leg push kick, the teep or the neb, depending on your terminology, is valued similarly for its lack of commitment and its length. More recently in mixed martial arts, the low lead sidekick has found great importance. Because it requires little commitment, is one of the longest strikes available against the nearest target, and is difficult to grab a hold of. To see a true master of the lead in action, fans should acquaint themselves with Semi Shield. The Dutch Karateka's lead leg front snap kick, Hizami Maigeri, carried him to dozens of victories. There are a hundred ways to make leading more effective, from hand fighting to fainting to combination striking, but these are for another day. Delayed counters. Delayed counters are blows which are thrown as the opponent is recovering from his own strikes. The classic idea of make and miss and make and pay. Even if a fighter leads beautifully and stays down behind his shoulders, he is vulnerable as he recovers. One method which fans will be familiar with is the slip and counter. Ross Pearson's infamous inside slip is a great example. The inside slip is so called because the fighter slips inside the opponent's jab, towards their power hand. For this reason, it is considered more dangerous. But mastery of the inside slip can lead to beautiful counter striking. Pearson's left hook perfectly catches opponents as they recover from a missed lead. But if a fighter is in a defensive mindset, it can be difficult to catch him with a perfect punch. Many of the best counterfighters have fought in counter combinations, aimed at flustering the opponent and landing a clean strike or two after they've covered up. Juan Manuel Marquez is a great example of this in boxing. In the UFC, we have Jose Aldo. Each time Ricardo Lamas led, Aldo would return in combination, ending with a low kick. Giorgio Petrosian, Anderson Silva, and other right-handed southpaws have had tremendous success with a delayed counter southpaw right hook. Drawing the opponent into overextending and nailing them with the counter as their lead hand drops and their weight continues forward. Simultaneous counters. Simultaneous counters are the most powerful techniques in martial arts. These are counters which are thrown as the opponent attacks, hitting him as he is placing his weight into his own blow. Where hitting a fighter as he is moving away reduces the impact, hitting a fighter as he steps in amplifies the force of the blow significantly. For this reason, many of the most incredible one-punch KOs have come as the result of a simultaneous counter. Lyoto Machida's Gyakuzuki, or reverse punch, is a terrific example of this. Japanese martial arts term simultaneous counters Sen no Sen, and Bruce Lee's entire philosophy of Jeet Kune Do, the way of the intercepting fist, was built around the idea of intercepting an opponent as he steps in, rather than blocking. Simultaneous counters also come in many varieties. The most powerful simultaneous counter by far is the cross counter. This technique was a favourite of old timers, even when the left hook was a trendy new idea. In the days of bare knuckle pugilism, the battle was always won between the jab and the right swing. If one could connect the jab, the opponent would be caught on the end of it, and his right hands would prove ineffectual. But if a fighter could slip to the inside of his opponent's jab and throw his right hand across the top of it, crossing it, he had a great chance of knocking his opponent out. This is where the term cross originally comes from, rather than referring to the right straight. The difference between a clumsy overhand and a cross counter is in timing it over the opponent's punch. 
I have given pride of place to a few examples, but consider that the great boxing coach, Edwin Hazlitt, did the maths and estimated that there are well over 700 different counterpunches a fighter could deliver. The line may be blurred, but everything in a fight is either a lead, a direct counter, or a simultaneous counter. No matter how good a fighter becomes, he will never invent a technique which does not conform to one of these initiatives. I'm Jack Slack, and this has been Ringcraft.